when I was a teenager, maybe 13 to 14, and I started going through puberty, I realized that one of my boobs wasn't growing at the same rate as my other one. My mum always noticed on my right side that my chest was encaved. From the beginning, I did notice that my left side was developing in a way slower rate than my right. My arm is shorter, my shoulder's narrower, my right breast is smaller. I'm only chest affected, and that is on the right side. I was born without any fingers on my right hand um, and uh, no pectoral muscle. My ribs were affected, and then I don't have the pec muscle. My son, Sahib, who's four years old, has Poland syndrome, and it affects the right side of his body. So he was born with um, three fingers missing and also the pectoral muscle. I'm right hand affected. Can you see? My son, George, was born with Poland syndrome. His fingers were joined together on the left-hand side, but he's also missing his major pectoral muscle. My right pectoral muscle is missing and two ribs are directly behind it. It's my chest, my hand, my rib cage. The top of my chest here is completely concave. I've got right hand, the pec muscle. I am left hand, put my hand up. And I also left chest. Live my whole life with a small hand and a hole in my chest. I mean, all of us are a little bit different in terms of how it affects us. This is the extent of how much I'm affected, um, which is um, a lot more mobile than a lot of people, but a lot less mobile than some people, as we know, this is a big spectrum. At the beginning of the spectrum is a missing chest muscle only and no effect on your hand or other parts of your body to... Um, having your ribs, your chest, your hands, and, you know, sometimes your organs affected as well. I spent the first seven years of my life in and out of hospitals. After my operation um, as a two-year-old to transplant two toes onto my hands. Yeah, they're my two toes, basically. So it's the second toe uh, from the big one that got transplanted when I was a kid. Started playing the table tennis and, and being involved with the Paralympic team when, when I was older. Medically, they, they did something wrong. They should have um, blocked their blood vessels. They made a mistake and they, they messed it up. In those days, the surgery was pretty bad, Gorgeous. but it works. It may not be pretty, but everything works. The big operation I had with the uh, the toes onto the hand, the shoulder blade muscle around the pectoral, that all happened when I was 11. When I was a baby, I couldn't crawl. My left side was always collapsing. The difficult part is, is obviously there's the joint. You know, if you don't have any joints that move and bend and stuff, there's where it comes into play. It wasn't easy because I did not know what it was. It's not particularly easy um, for a lot of us. You, you will have had to overcome a certain amount of adversity that most people won't totally understand. I mean, I was totally lost. You know, what do I do? How do I go about this? I mean, you're 16 and you're looking at, you know, potential breast implant sizes. And I just remember going, like, what is my life right now? Like, I don't even know how to make these decisions. My first surgery was 17. So I was still a child. You know, I used to look in the mirror and want to cry. Really, I struggled mentally with it, the physical appearance as a, as a young kid and feeling inadequate. I suffered mental illnesses, which included depression, anxiety, grief and many others get overwhelmed by thinking it's just happening to you i didn't really want to put myself out there because i was afraid of being rejected and made fun of i had this really horrible big secret that if anyone found out it would be the worst thing in the world i've been very closed with it so i haven't really like told people about it for many years i was trying to gather up the courage to talk to someone about how it affects me physically. If you do speak out and you do talk about it with somebody, they're going to be a lot less freaked out and um, a lot more understanding and actually just more interested than you actually think they're gonna be. I just thought I've got nothing to lose to talk to people and I, it has helped immensely. There are people who don't know that there are other people who are like them. I never met anyone who had Poland syndrome. I've never met anyone with this. I've never, ever met anyone else with the same conditions as me. I haven't met many adults or people my age, and I think there's a, a sort of like a lost generation out there. I've never met a doctor in Australia that knows what Poland syndrome is. Mm -hmm. And I've been to a lot of doctors over my time, and they go, Poland syndrome, what's that? So I was diagnosed within 24 hours. It did take a little while for me to be diagnosed. I was possibly about... 
six or seven. First time I took him to the GP, the GP had no idea what Poland syndrome was. Not one doctor picked up that I'd got Poland. My doctors told me, it's nothing, it's normal. Every woman has one boob bigger than the other. And they always said it was because I was squashed in the womb and it would just pop out. I visited different hospitals, meeting different doctors, but no one ever told me it was Poland syndrome. So I went to my gynecologist and she was very upfront with me, which I honestly did appreciate. She was like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Like, I don't know why this is happening. Complete and utter ignorance of the medical profession to the condition. Yeah, it's just ignorance. That's all I class it as. You know, if a doctor will sit and ask me to help them understand, then I'm happy for to do that. But if they're going to sit and Google it in front of me, then I'm sorry, I can learn that at home. Doctors need to really be educated. The general medical population wouldn't necessarily know uh, what it is. When I was discovered that I had this strange hand, nobody knew anything. Nobody knew what to call it. It just came out weird. Very rarely do they know what Poland syndrome is. I just can't get help. There's no help whatsoever for Poland syndrome. From speaking to a lot of people with Poland syndrome, the lack of support um, and the lack of knowledge seems to be the main thing that concerns them, especially parents. I founded PIP, the charity, in 2011. We're advocates not just for those like young families with children. I've been in appointments with breast surgeons and ladies that have already had surgery and then having issues with their implants and then not being listened to about getting repairs to be there and advocate for them and stand up for them as well. So I had a year of having fluid injected every week into a bag so that my skin would stretch so it stretches your skin out over time and each month i had to go to the hospital and get an inject like injected in here in like a little socket just under my boob with saline each month he couldn't find where the port was so he ended up just injecting saline just into me and my mum was never ever given an option it was like this is what we've got to do and I was in agony for a year having that done at 16. When I was growing up there was nothing about Poland syndrome anywhere I couldn't find anything about it on the internet. I just started doing research research research. I've gone through bouts where I've tried to do more research but there's really not much out there. It's a complex syndrome that we don't really know enough about. I think it's probably underestimated a lot of people don't know they have been born with Poland syndrome. Nobody knew what it was. They just dealt with it as something that had to be fixed. Because that's your first reaction is, oh my God, there's something different about me. There's something wrong with me, you know? I got made to feel like it was something to be embarrassed of and something to be ashamed of, and it's not. What, what's my legacy? And what can I do for future generations? I hope that I can tell younger people the things that I wish I could have told my younger self and show people that it's okay to you know be different and 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 to not have like the normal body standard I go and talk to doctors about it giving them oh we think it might be this many births it happens in and we think this many people might have it on the left side that doesn't really cut it in the medical world to just guess there's so little known about the commonalities of this condition my my left earphone always falls out of my ear and I've got no idea why. We've both got our right ears smaller than the other as well. I never even thought about that. All my life I have been told multiple different things about Poland syndrome. We think it could be caused by that. We may, it may be caused like that. It might cause other problems, but we don't know for sure. Someone was told that they couldn't give blood because they had Poland syndrome and someone was told that they would definitely develop kidney disease because they have Poland syndrome. Because as we know, there's a easy spread of misinformation. I mean, I've talked to my mum more about it. So she was always led to believe it was because my dad had got TB. That's why I'd got Poland's. It's just not good enough that people are given this information by medical professionals and we're on a mission to change that. So we at PIP UK are creating the Poland Syndrome Community Register so that we can finally capture data about Poland syndrome, about its symptoms, about the problems it causes people in their daily life um, and what conditions it's associated with. So we can finally have a set of data to go to medical professionals with and say, 
look, you can't ignore us now. There are so many of us. Here's what's happening. Here's the data. You now need to do research into Poland syndrome and you need to help us get a defined path to treatment and diagnosis. From like a doctor's point of view, I think it's an amazing opportunity to, to gather some data, which is always what's required. As a charity, we can then go to Public Health England, basically to show them that there are enough people in the country who are affected by, by this condition. When you come to log into the register, which hopefully you're going to do very soon, you'll be presented with four simple surveys. They will be a medical history survey where you will talk about your symptoms of Poland syndrome and how you were diagnosed, any other related conditions that you have, how you are affected on a daily basis by your condition. And then the other two surveys in there at the moment are just some simple demographic surveys to help us understand more about you as a person, us as a community, what age we all are. The more we put into this, the more we are all going to get out of it. This will help our doctors to do more research about Poland syndrome so that more help is given, more medical attention is given so that we live better lives. Yeah, I think the register is a great, great initiative. I'm totally on board with it. So you've got a, a better chance of saying this is for sure rather than we're not so sure. This register will hopefully answer those questions and then hopefully nobody else will have to grow up never knowing the answers. Hopefully it will help people get the support that they need and the answers that they need. Hopefully it will help people get a diagnosis sooner because people will look out for the other signs and symptoms that come along with it. So the register, by the more people we have, the more information we can put into the database to try and identify the source of the problem. I think the registry First of all, from a medical perspective, is going to be very important. The Poland register means a huge deal to me as the parent and as the mother of a child with Poland syndrome. It would just be so incredible to have this data coming from our community that we can then take to the NHS, to the professions, to the organisations and say, this is what we know to be true about this condition by people who have the condition or who are parents of children who have this condition. The register means the world to me because I've been working on it since 2011 to bring it together. By signing it, you're helping in a small way to improve healthcare for people with Poland syndrome in the future. The more people that come forward and sign this register and share their other symptoms and other signs and stories, that it will help future generations feel less alone and have the knowledge that they need that I wish that I had had when I was that age. Every single person that signs that register, it helps. Realise that there are others that you would be helping as well. So please join the register. You'll help everybody else. So I encourage everyone out there to yeah, get on the register. It will be good for us and those who will come after us, whether we are there or not. If anybody was considering signing up but they weren't too sure yet, I would say that they should definitely do it because it's anonymous. It will help other people. It will probably help themselves too. Please reach out if you're having any difficulty at all with completing it as well. We're here for you. The more people that sign, the more awareness we can spread. Go on, give it a go. You know, you've got nothing to lose. So many people just go, oh my God. What do you mean, Poland syndrome? It's not a real thing, is it really? It's like a throwaway thing. It's more than that. So this is our opportunity to put, almost put our stake in the ground and say, this matters, our children matter. We are making history here. Poland syndrome itself is not a problem. How you handle it is a challenge. It makes us who we are, sorry. It, it's, it's just us. There's nothing wrong with us. I know and I'm sure it's never easy, but thank you for keeping strong. Overall in my life, it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's probably been a good thing rather than a bad thing. Naturally, it just gets much better as you get older. You just start caring a lot less. Every once in a while, I look in the mirror and I see something that I love. If I could go back in time and tell myself anything, I would tell myself that, you know, it's okay to have this syndrome. You're perfect the way that you are and you aren't alone with it it's discovering that we're not alone in lots of ways by no means does this diagnosis diminish your self-worth in any capacity we are not defined by our disabilities we are defined by our ability yeah we may have disabilities and yes we do have our struggles but hey we can still do things seeing so few doctors with with physical disabilities i feel yeah i feel proud of myself
of, of where I've managed to get to. I'm not going to let the fact that I look different from everybody else mean that I'm not beautiful. I am different and I am, I'm not like the normal mold of what I should look like. It, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, we're all beautiful.